and I'd done some 3D graphic stuff back at university a long time ago on like SGI workstations and uh, I hadn't really done anything since that point and there were a lot of rumblings that Apple was looking at AR in a big way and possibly looking at AR in a big way because of future products you know so whether you're going to be wearing AR glasses in a few years time who knows we, um, but it seems like Apple's investing more heavily in ar than is justified by what they're currently doing with ar <laughs> uh and you know we, we've seen leaks of there are products in the works and whether these things actually make it to a product like an actual product is still an open question but you know they're clearly working on something so i started with that as a i would like to learn about doing ar you know how does one start with that and it's like well Best way, if you're going to be on Apple platforms to do that, is to use SceneKit as your 3D engine because Apple's done a lot with SceneKit. It's a very high-level, object-oriented thing. You know, it's kind of like, you know, make a box, put it here. That box has, you know, this weight, these physics properties, you know, now run everything and a physics engine will run it and and things like that. And I was like, okay, this, this seems fun. Um, and this... Uh, you will people who have seen the talk that I did on Easter eggs will know that part of my attraction to all this stuff was uh, some of the 3D things that were in Apple's little Easter eggs in the OS going back into the 90s. And I wanted my, my goal was, can I make a 3D version of the icon for my app, which is just sitting in the uh, about screen, which you can move around. And I had been doing some stuff that summer with making alternative app icons like i got into this thing of like i did a few alternative app icons and people liked them so i did more of them and then i did more of them and peak out currently are something like 48 alternative app icons that you can pick and part of that i started well how can i do different ones because i'm not an artist i'm not very good at it but um I can mess around with stuff in the 3d software package right. and until it looks nice you know make it look chrome shine a nice light on it that that kind of thing so what i did was as part of that i had a 3d model of the icon which i had built and it's like well let's take this let's import this we'll put it in the uh in the scene kit uh, scene file and it's like hmm, i now have a thing i can move a light i can you know shine a light on it and have a light that's sort of circling this icon and then i was like well, let's play with it you know oh there's a physics engine what happens if I assign physics to this to these objects? And it's like, what if I had other objects? And it's like, uh, what's an interesting object? Bananas are an interesting shape. <laughs> what happens if you threw a banana at this icon? And it's like, oh, it bounces off. This is quite good. What happens if you drop 500 bananas on it? And it's like, <laughs> the performance is terrible. Why is the performance terrible? You know, I, and kind of, it was an exploring because I didn't have any real background in 3D graphics or, you know, performance optimization of 3D stuff. And it was like, I basically worked my way through the scene kit APIs and I was like working through them. And then it's like, oh, there's a vehicle API. Like you can take a model, you can say, these are four wheels and you can spin the wheels and you can turn the wheels. And it's basically, you have a little car and it's like, what if I put a little car in this? And then I put a little car in it and you could drive it around. It's like, Okay, what happens if I put a ramp? You know, I could build a ramp in a 3D graphics package. You know, it's just a you know a triangle extruded out. So I built a ramp, and I drove the car at it, and the car like jumped into the air and did this sort of real magnificent jump. I thought, this is amazing, <laughs> <laughs> and and it was just the that kind of. And that's where it led to like, well, let's make a little assault course so that this car can drive around and jump through hoops. And then if you've delved deeper into the about screen, there's a whole city that you can drive around in <laughs> and there's a castle. And then it was like, I wonder if I could make my own like thing. So I said, well, let's try and make a helicopter. And it's like, how do you make the physics engines for a helicopter? And it's like, well, let's think of it not like a helicopter. Let's think of it like a quadcopter. Like, let's take this thing and mount four virtual sort of thrusters underneath it. Could I do something like that that auto-balanced itself? And that's an interesting problem to try and solve. And it's like, so I made a... It's, I mean, this is not a 
physically accurate simulation of a helicopter by any means but it was a fun thing to try and like do this and the the Sinkit apis are really nice um i enjoy them a lot in the kind of stuff that you can do 